Hi, this video is for you if you want to figure out if your students are learning stuff when you're trying to teach them programming. Number one, give them some code and see if they can predict the output of the code. Okay, this is a really important way to, to test if, like, oh, are they able to read through code? That's an important thing before students become really fluent in being able to write code is like, do you understand the ways in which specific commands produce specific behavior by, from the computer? Okay. Number two, find and fix bugs. We know that a really important thing in programming is being able to debug. Like, it's most of what you do. Okay, and so, you know, when students, when you ask students to write some code, they're not all going to run into the same bugs. So to make sure students have exposure to some of those bugs, it's helpful to have them find and fix bugs. Also, this is another great way to test if they're understanding some of the programming content. Number three. Explain, compare, or critique code. Okay, this is super helpful because, you know, we don't just want students to be at the level of semicolons or lines of code. We want them to be able to abstract and say, like, oh, this chunk of code does this. These can be a lot harder to grade, and so I use them more often when I have students talking to each other. Uh, but you can say, oh, summarize what this piece of the code is doing, or summarize, write a comment for the method, or I have a variable in some provided code. It's got a terrible variable name. Come up with a variable name that would make more sense. Number four, arrange code segments. So if I want students to solve a problem doing X, instead of having them write the code from scratch, what I can do is give them lines of code, and then they can combine those lines of code to write a correct program to solve the problem. And so instead of having to remember everything, they can just find it and organize it. And so it's trying to separate out pieces of the programming process. And these are typically called Parsons problems. Okay. Number five, solve the problem by hand. So I have students, you know, maybe I give them some input and I see if they can predict what the output is. Or I ask them to write tests so that they're thinking not just about the instantiation of that uh, solution in code, but how does that solution work in general? Uh, what are some of the boundary cases and things like that? Number six, have, create, have students create a portfolio. You know, a lot of times we think, oh, we can only assess students by having them, you know, write code during an exam or something like that. But there's, there's so much that they learn by having them put together a portfolio. It's something they can show off to their family, to their friends, uh, to future students. And it allows them to show more of a breadth of what they've learned rather than just one programming problem. Last is have them write or modify code. So you can give them code and then have them change it to change the specific behavior. That tests if they understand the role of different parts of the code or the thing that you might thought, think of most um, instinctively is if I wanna test students' ability to write code, I'll just have them write code. But there's this whole package of different activities we have, can have students engage in. Good luck assessing students' understanding and using that to improve your teaching.